Hi, this is Mike, alcoholic. I put together this video for a seven minute quiet time. And there's a little intro from Paul F. He will talk about the four absolutes and how the AA pioneers did a daily written meditation and used the four absolutes as a way of discerning God's will from self-will. And for those who don't know, the four absolutes are simple, four principles of honesty, purity, unselfishness, and love. So when you hear the word absolute, people get scared and they say, I can't absolute anything, that all or nothing, black and white, perfect, I'll do it perfect or I won't do it at all attitude or thinking has to be um, revised a little bit the idea is you know if you're in a boat and you're using oars to get across the lake you look for a landmark and say you see a for instance a I don't know a house or a tree or some kind of landmark out in the distance, you kind of keep your eye on that and you, you oar and you paddle your boat across the lake towards that direction. That's the same idea with the uh, four absolutes. Using the four principles of honesty, purity, purity of motive, unselfishness, and love, all four together as a way of discerning what's coming from God and what's coming from self-will. So for instance, if I wrote down in meditation, say a prayer for so-and-so, that would pass the four absolutes. And if I wrote down in meditation, avoid this person, that would fail the four absolutes. And that's just a simple example. But, uh, yeah, there's going to be a little notation on this uh, intro where you can skip ahead and just go to the seven-minute quiet time. There's a prayer that's going to be in front of the seven-minute quiet time. Catherine did a workshop back in 2008 in Cleveland, Ohio, and she had this prayer that she received in guidance to say before she starts her quiet time so i'm going to include that with the seven minute quiet time so i'll have a thing right again i'll have a thing at the beginning of this intro at the bottom of the page where you can skip ahead and go right to right to the seven minute quiet time but i think it's important to have this little intro by paul he will talk about the four absolutes and how they were used and it's something that I think is very important because the whole book, in my opinion, is written for one reason, to establish a relationship with the higher power of your understanding. Because we do suffer from a spiritual malady, we're not connected to a higher power. Uh, my higher power is the creator. Uh, and... In the big book, it talks about the spirit of the universe, and they use God as a word as a convenience. It's not a; it's used in religion, but when you use the word creator, it strips away all the drama and the, all the baggage of religion. And we're dealing with spiritual principles and a spiritual way of life. So when I say the higher power, my higher power is the creator. What I'm saying is he created me, and he's the father, and on the book it talks about, you know, he's the director, and new employer, etc. So, again, I don't want to get too winded here, but I just want to make a quick intro explaining what this video is all about. It's to help you establish a meditation life in the morning, especially... And then when you do your step, step 11 review, there's another meditation. And really, you could do a timeout and do a meditation for as long as you want, anytime, anywhere. And use the four absolutes as a way of helping you understand what's coming from your higher power 
and what's coming from self-will. Be aware that in the 40s, the early AA members, especially in the Cleveland and Akron area, did what they called daily written meditation. They did it daily. They prayed and they meditated. After meditating, they pulled out pencil and paper and wrote down all the guidance that they received. No editing. Write it all down. And then they took those thoughts, that guidance, and they tested it against the four absolutes. See, if it's honest, pure, loving, and unselfish, I can be assured that it came from God. Keeping in mind that not everything I hear in meditation comes from God. So what this process will do for you is it will clearly identify the origin of your guidance. So they would take the four absolutes and test it against the guidance. This way they could be assured which guidance came from God and which came from them. Here are some examples on this, on this piece of paper, on this handout. Let's assume that this is the guidance you received in your meditation. Give them a piece of my mind. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? No, that came from me. Next one, be patient with others today. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? Yes, that came from God. I need to avoid that person today. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? No. Be kind to others today. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? Yes, that came from God. Accept others as they are. Is that honest, pure, loving, and unselfish? Yes. So here we can be assured which guidance came from me and which came from God. This is what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to do it just for one week. Try it for one week. Meditate after you pray. That means listen. All the guidance that comes to you, write it down on paper. Test the guidance against the four absolutes. Come back next week. And though I understand this is a private matter, personal to you in your, in your two-way communication with God, I'm going to ask that you come back next week and be willing to share with us the guidance that you received from God, not the guidance you received from you. So what you do is you test it against the four absolutes, cross off the guidance that came from you. The purpose of doing this is to show you that God does exist and that he does communicate to us during meditation. Those of you that are willing to complete this exercise will be a great example to those in this room that are still doubtful that God communicates to us through meditation. There are a lot of books out there that you can read on meditation. There's one book I would recommend that you get for meditation. And it's a book that has the word meditation in it. If it says meditation, get it. If you don't have information on meditation, it's information that you don't have. There's no right way, there's no wrong way to do this. You have to find a way that works for you. What I did in the beginning was I used the serenity prayer for a period of time. I used the 12 steps. In other words, I would recite all 12 steps in my head so I could get quiet. You can try using breathing exercises or simply focusing on your breathing Go through a process where you're relaxing the entire body, you know, where you're starting at the top of your head and you're telling yourself, I'm okay, I'm going to relax my head, my neck, my shoulders, my chest, my stomach, etc., etc. Whatever works for you. Personally, I like to have a quiet place. When I do my meditation, I go a place where there's no phones and there's no TV and there's no one knocking on the door. And I go through my prayers and I go through this process of attempting to become quiet and still. In the beginning, it was real difficult. There was a lot of chatter going on in my head. The worst thing we can do during meditation is trying to stop it. Let it happen. Don't try to control the chatter in your head. Practice the daily written meditation.
remember back in the third step where we made a decision to do God's will over self will to turn our thinking and our actions over, and then it said that we have a new director now. You know, in the third step it says we have a new director. We have a new boss. And then in step four it says we're on a different basis. The basis of trusting and relying upon God. Right? And then in step five it says that we're developing a new relationship with our Creator. So a relation is a relationship is that we talk and we listen. And like I said earlier, I always forgot about that listening part. And so now we're going to learn how to re- how to listen, how to tap into that God conscious within, how to tap into that listen to that voice within. Um, right. It's um, it's nice to have some kind of ritual around it where you do a reading or something. Some people like to breathe deeply or have a special place that they sit every day and do this, a quiet place somewhere you feel comfortable, somewhere that you're honoring this, you know, this procedure. Okay. Well, and again, you know, this is a this is a spiritual exercise like everything else. So is prayer. Now, what we like to do, uh, one time I was doing my prayer and meditation few years ago and I and I got the the uh, the message or the direction to write what I all I could think of calling it was a pre prayer prayer. <laughs> Something to get me in the right space, you know, so that I wasn't uh, I wasn't off base and and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read this prayer and then we're all going to sit quietly and write down whatever comes to mind and, re- and for just two or three minutes. And remember, you can't do this wrong. And you can't fake it either. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's just going to happen. It'll be fun. We're going we're gonna, to uh, hear what some of these uh, responses are that we get. It's really exciting. Okay, here's, our, uh, here's the prayer I wrote. God, during this quiet time, I pray that my writing will reflect that my life is presently being guided by unselfishness, honesty, purity, and love. I pray to now open myself to receive your guidance and direction. I pray for the will to take your direction in a timely manner that I may continue to grow spiritually and experience a profound life of serenity and joy. Amen. Okay, let's do our writing.
Okay, thank you. That was a seven minute quiet time. And again, I really want to encourage you to establish a meditation life. That simply means getting quiet and listening to your higher power in silence. So, I just want to give you a quick recap on what just happened. Getting quiet and establishing a meditation life, you have a communication, uh, what they call a relationship, talking and listening. In step 11, they call it prayer and meditation. So when you get quiet and listen to God, that's considered two-way prayer. You write down your meditation, and basically it's your directions for today. And the idea is in the evening you want to check your notes, your written meditation from the morning, and see if, if you've done the things that you've written down. This is just an example. So... I used to do a workshop in Cleveland, Ohio on Sunday night on the east side of Cleveland. Uh, it was the, called the Beginner's Big Book, and it was at the Night and Day Club. And we were there 13 years, and it was my favorite session was the Step 11 five-minute quiet time. It, we, would, we would actually take five minutes in the meeting and get quiet. Everybody would write down their meditation and use the four absolutes and then we would ask you know if you want to share your meditation and I would share my meditations others in the meeting would share and after they're done sharing I would ask is there any meditation you heard from somebody else that's helped you tonight and you heard the expression God talks through people this is called three-way prayer and we did that also so it was pretty amazing, amazing. I, You know, God is alive, and he communicates, and it was really something. And so, again, just real fast to summarize, when you take a quiet time and write down your meditation, that's considered two-way. When you share it in a group setting or with a sharing partner, and that person or the person in the group, benefits from your guidance that helps that person that's called three-way prayer and I just love to point that out because I really don't see it a lot emphasized in the meetings that's the beauty of AA that there's meditation there's the God of your understanding the Creator etc that you have your own understanding or concept of so this is a way of actually in meditation as a way of getting inspiration, intuitive thought, or decision, guidance. And we use the four absolutes to avoid hysterical thinking. So the expression in the big book, uh, we claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. I think that's in reference to the absolutes people think. Well, if I don't do it 100% perfect, uh, why bother? Or I can never do that. And so they basically quit before they even start. In the beginning of this tape, I used the example of being in a boat. You're using the four absolutes as a landmark. That's something you go in that direction. Of course, you're not going to do it perfectly. We're not walking on water. At least I'm not. And... You know, there's going to be new mistakes, as it says in step 10. But we use this as a way of a benchmark or a way of going in that direction of honesty, purity, unselfishness, and love, all four combined. That is something that I do personally. I practice these principles on a daily basis. You know, it's funny, or well, not funny, but... There's a quote in the book, uh, I think it's on page 84, where it says, and this is something I do every morning. First thing I do when I become conscious in the morning, I say, God, <coughs> excuse me, it's a, it says on awakening. It says on awakening, we ask God to direct our thinking. Then it'd be divorced from self-pity, self-seeking, and dishonest motives. So if God's going to direct our thinking, that implies 
that I'm going to have God thoughts. And what's interesting too, just real quick, is divorced from self-pity, self-seeking, and dishonest motives. Divorced. It implies I'm married to that stuff. So, yeah, it's all good. I'm just... I just encourage you to get a meditation life and I'll see you down the road as we trudge the road of happy destiny. God bless.